before I start, I would like to tell you that I have a very bad cough and cold. So I might end up sounding sick and sexy at the same time. <laughs> just saying. If I sound sexy, it's just me, okay? <laughs> Some memories never fade. The excitement of venturing into becoming an IT professional. The fear of being rejected. The sadness of rejections and the excitement of clearing an interview round. These memories are still vivid in my head. All of us techies across the city were doing the same thing. Waking up at five, cleaning our nails, straightening that one rebellious curl with lots of oil, <laughs> and shaving out every sign of facial hair, thereby achieving what we call the Lacme Clear Face. And then dressing up, going through some basic computer algorithms and hoping them to be potential questions for an interview. We commuted to each and every nook and corner of Mumbai in search of a job. A job that would help us give some assurance to our parents that their money and time and patience and money <laughs> were invested wisely. The school of fresh graduates called this phenomenon of roaming in the streets for a job, the corporate Mumbai Darshan. Going into these never-ending job searches back then, I realized two things. One, software industries had outnumbered the local Pantapri shops. <laughs> Samosa Pau was highly underrated and should be India's national dish. <laughs> Navi Mumbai was a haven for startups during this period. Low cost of rent and uh, low cost of rent and abundant but unused talent was available everywhere. Finally, after a, after months of grueling scrutiny, I was accepted with an offer of nine thousand eight hundred rupees per month. Finally, I was able to convince my parents that I really was willing to do something with my engineering degree. Startups are the best learning experience a fresh graduate could ask for. You work on new technology, and you work on new on you work on setting up new systems from scratch, and then you learn how to behave professionally. And then one fine day, when you've learned a trick or two, you completely desert the company. <laughs> Despite the normal rotation of the workforce, startups go all guns blazing to satisfy customers and sell them their product. Not really just satisfy, but to go above and beyond. To show the client that there is real value in their services, they adopt the de facto principle that if the customer asks for, for a glass of water, provide it to him with a straw and tell him, tell him that the straw makes the water tastier. That was exactly how we sold our products, with bendy straws for each and every person we came in contact with. I could sense my stint with my first company coming to an end as I felt the role was getting monotonous. My learning curve was shaping up into a plateau. But more importantly, I wanted more money. And I had an acute need to delve into new technology, to gain specific and marketable skills so as to increase the weight of my one-page resume. So on the side, I kept my eyes open for a possible new job and ended up, and ended up one day getting an offer from another IT company, which was yet another startup. 15,000 rupees, she said, with a broad smile on her face. Again, in order to cater to the client's every possible need, with the goal of turning them into a customer champion, I marched on with undaunted hopes. With almost six weeks of experience on the new job, my manager told me I was ready for some real client interaction. Client interaction. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> My job was to meet Mr. Umesh Shah, who had forayed into entrepreneurship. I didn't know what his business was about. All my boss had to say was, he's one of our oldest clients, and he needs some help with streamli streamli streamlining his workflow. Go there and give it your best shot. I was motivated, and the eye of the tiger was playing in the background. 
just like rocky training in the snow in the old soviet union i trained in the ac at my office <laughs> i took his number from my boss and called him up immediately he lived in the suburbs and our headquarters was in navi mumbai we decided to meet at a common location turbe's wholesale vegetable market <laughs> He said he needed to buy some apples there. <laughs> And since it was halfway for both of us, it was perfect. <laughs> While I was waiting for him, a lot of questions engaged my mind. What would he really want from me? Would I be able to help him? And not not just help him, but would I be able to create a very good impression so that, you know, he suggest my name to others also maybe he needs some it cons consultation towards enhancing his web presence or maybe he needs to know how he can make the use of it to work synergistically with his business as my mind started creating more and more questions i got a call hi where are you standing he asked in heavy gujarati diction i told him i was near the apmc market front gate next to the next to the bus stop i was excited to meet him i saw someone get down with a phone in his hand from a rickshaw i still had my phone pressing my ears i went towards mr shah and shook his hand and introduced myself in fake american accent <laughs> that somehow came out sounding french <laughs> he replied back in american for some reason too <laughs> but he still sounded gujarati <laughs> maybe when you're nervous the inner person you try to image yourself to be comes out i don't know i don't know but we both sounded like nitwits as we spoke i realized we were on our way to his home and not his office i didn't ask why but i figured like other clients sometime did maybe he required some confidential consultation on a way i got to know about his company he said he wanted to start a juice business and really wanted to integrate technology into it <laughs> to streamline as to streamline it in all kinds of ways he talked about how he had just contracted with several local juice vendors to collaborate with him he had ordered some very particular machines from the us which apparently resulted in extra special juice <laughs> because of some secret method that the flux capacitor of juice has i guess <laughs> to top it all off he said this mechanism somehow preserved more of the fruit's nutritional value it sounded a bit out there but no stranger than other passionate entrepreneurs that our company worked with As we got down from the rickshaw, he started digging into his wallet for change, and realized he didn't have any. So I stepped in right away and paid the remaining thirty-three bucks. I made a mental note of it, but then I shrugged off the thought of asking money from him. Now, after all, he's my client. Who asked for thirty-three bucks? I should have paid in the first place. I'm so cheap. <laughs> We reached his door. He rang the bell, and Mrs. Shah answered. She acknowledged my presence with a simple nod of the head, but somehow, it was as sophisticated as Shara Pawar to the chair umpire. <laughs> I don't know why I remember that detail, but it just gave me the feeling that this family was smart and professional. <laughs> I was in the right place. <laughs> This was all set to be a great learning experience. <laughs> And now I can see it all up close in Technicolor. I unpacked my bag, set up my laptop, took out my phone in case I needed it, unwrapped the plastic from a notebook and took out a pen. They had a little boy. He was about 4 and he greeted me with a very innocent Hello uncle 
I didn't mind the jive from that kid. <laughs> no, I really didn't mind. Okay, why did he have to say that? <laughs> I looked beyond my shoulder, you know, pretended if somebody was behind me. Kaun's <laughs> uncle? <laughs> I smiled at him anywhere. His mother said, Beta, ye uncle mechanic hai. <laughs> Which roughly meant, he's just another guy who's good with wires. I was shocked at this typecasting of techies as mechanics. I was about to tell her that I'm a qualified IT guy. But just then, my client asked me to accompany him to another room. The wallpaper of the room was covered in strawberries. <laughs> there were big strawberries, small strawberries, strawberry blossoms, and families feasting on strawberries. Maybe it was too much strawberry for me, but someone in the house obviously loved them. He guided me to the only thing that was relevant to me in that room, which was his desktop PC. <sighs> he looked at the machine, made sure the cables were tightly fastened, cleared his throat, picked up his notebook and opened to a page that some, with some scribbled lines and a diagram on it and stated my purpose of being there. He said, I want you to print 12 labels on an A4 size paper. <laughs> As I heard it, I felt silent. But my eyes were locked into his. And I said, okay, and then what? He said nothing. That's it. <laughs> Before I could ask a follow-up, his wife, his wife came into the room and asked her husband, which roughly means, is this mechanic going to have our food too? He said, yes, and they both left the room. Leaving me with a desktop machine, a Windows desktop machine with an Apple logo as wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> to work, work on in the middle of a forest of strawberries. I was disappointed and furious at the same time. I, a PHP programmer, hands-on experience on Linux systems, and someone who has ex exclusive knowledge on Perl programming, was hired by Mr. Juice Master to print labels. As soon as I got a chance, I called up my boss. I told him that all he wants to do is get me print 12 labels on an A4 size paper. That his four-year-old son can also do. There was some silence. And I felt he understood the pain in my voice. But then he said, Rohit Beta, give it your best shot. <laughs> Not every job is a roller coaster of excitement. <laughs> I wanted to call my mom. and went. I wanted to tell her that I had made a mistake and that the world is not safe for IT engineers. But instead, I said, okay, to my boss and hung up the phone. I had to do the right thing, the same thing, which was to do what was required. I started working on getting the 12 labels printed on an A4 size paper and simultaneously, also started eating the dal rice the wife silently left me at the desktop. I nodded and smiled as best as I could. I was setting up the label template, getting the dimensions right, so as to arrange the entire strip properly. When I heard that little kid come inside the room and say, Ab ghar nahi jayenge? Which roughly meant, I think you really are gawking at my mom. Don't you want to go home? By now, I wanted, to tell, I wanted to tell that kid that he should act according to his age. I wanted to tell him that his father is a loser 
who can't press the print button. And if he can't do that, then his special imported juice business has about 0% chance of taking off. And that they are going to be miserable at the end of this venture. I wanted to tell him that the happy family portrait next to him was on the brink of a major, freshly squeezed disaster. <laughs> Instead of saying that, I just said, I'm almost done. I printed out the labels for Mr. Shah. I had to do it multiple times, as he thought the borders weren't perfectly aligned. He also asked me if there was a way he could automate the process of printing. <laughs> Not really, I said. You just put the paper in and press print. <laughs> it's so simple that it's kind of automated already. <laughs> he really liked my answer. <laughs> Finally, he was happy with the borders and gave me a nod of acknowledgement. I felt like one of those hardware engineers who take their customers for a ride by tightening a screw and blaming the computer's motherboard for the problem. <laughs> I felt bad about this experience because I was the only engineer in my family and my folks had a lot of hope from me. I had been striving hard to make a name for myself and for my parents, of course. I had a lot to offer. I felt and I, I vowed to myself that I would never do such menial tasks for money. With a sour taste in my mouth, both from the dal and the labels, I put my, I put my bag on my shoulder and walked to the door. I was all set to leave, but just then, I turned back to Mr. Shah and asked, Do you have the 33 bucks I paid for the rickshaw? <laughs> he looked a little confused, but found the chain. I snatched the money with extra gusto. <laughs> Thinking about those days, I now realize how the recession had made us desperate. The company I worked for would make us do anything that would fetch them money, no matter how minor the task. That was my one and only house call. After that, I mostly sat on my desk writing code. I ended up working for eight months with that company and finally landed my dream job in a much better company. Things are pretty good now. I can solve most problems over the phone. People know how to use the printer. <laughs> Perhaps the best part is I don't have to go door to door for any kind of client consultation. But every once in a while, I do get nightmares related to work, where a dark silhouette appears from the wilderness and says, Beta, ye uncle mechanic hai. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rohit.